emphasize power to kill them. But then I realized that there was other ways to kill Good morning, everybody. Let's all stand. I bet you're all feeling rested with that new extra hour of sleep. <laughs> I'm not.
Actually, I got, got an extra hour of sleep last night. Actually, I gained two hours the time I woke up Saturday morning, because I woke up Saturday morning in the Eastern time zone. So between yesterday morning and this morning, I gained two hours. So I've got two hours more of my life. I'm going to spend one of the praises on. So um, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much uh, for this time to be together. God, we thank you for this service. God, we thank you uh, for this great mystery we call Daylight Savings Time. And uh, God, we just pray that you would send your Holy Spirit down upon this place today. God, fill this place, fill this people, fill this preacher with the power and presence of your Holy Spirit. That we may worship you and glorify you. Open our hearts and our minds to your word today. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. 
children come forward, please. service, but I wear it all the time at the 11 o'clock service, and it comes in all different colors, or well, comes in four different colors, and it matches, always matches these up here for the season of the day that we're in. And does anybody know the day we're on today? Do you know? We're, yes, we are in November, that is true. But the, yes. The 7th is tomorrow, the 6th. It's the 6th of November, but we know the dates. But the first Sunday of November, is a day we call All Saints Sunday. And it's a day that we remember all the saints, right? And sometimes we think about like, like famous saints, the, the men and women who get their name on the calendar, right? But we also remember that there's saints among us today that we're all saints of God. And there are saints who've been part of our church that have now gone to heaven and they're very important to us and we love them and we remember what they've done for us. And that's what this day is all about, is all Saints Day. And we actually have some special guests that are with us today uh, that are families of, of some of those who have, who have gone to heaven in the past year. We've invited them back to celebrate with us today. But that's what today is. So today I, I want to show you this because this is my soul. And it's really just a, 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 a fancy thing. Uh, part of like the uniform uh, that I wear as a pastor. It tells everybody I'm a pastor, and it's really nice and fancy and matches the color, like I said. But sometimes, and, and you wear it for some sort of show and brother, but, but sometimes when you are ordained at the conference, they have a special service where they have pastors who are retiring who are, are stopping, and they're not going to be pastors anymore, at least not, not full time. And so they'll take a stole and they'll take their stole off and they'll lay it on the altar. And then when the new pastors come to be ordained, they'll take the stole and put it on the around the neck of the of the new pastor. And that reminds us of our Bible story today of Elijah and Elisha. Elijah was a prophet and Elisha was his apprentice, his student. And Elijah was getting ready to go to heaven. And when Elijah went to heaven, he left his cloak behind for Elijah to have. He passed that on to him. And so how that ties in with All Saints Day is that we've been talking about the promises, right? We've been talking about our promises, right? Prayers, presents, gifts, servants, ways. We've been talking about quite a lot now. And today we're going to wrap that up. And we remember that the only reason we have a church today is that the saints who have gone before us kept their promises. Their promises of prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. And now we have a church today, and now it's our turn to keep our promises of prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness, and then be ready to pass that on to the people that come after us. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for all the saints who have kept their promises of prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. And now help us to keep our promises too. In Jesus' name, amen. Give one back. <laughs> Honestly, there. Some tightness. There we go.
Famous one that's for God we fall down. What? That's during communion. I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> it's during communion. <laughs> All right. I'm a little messed up. I've been traveling and time change and too much sleep. Yeah, that's my problem. Too much sleep. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We are glad that you're here. Uh, we do have a busy service this morning. Uh, the sermon is short, but we have a busy service this morning as we remember our promises and we remember the saints that have gone before us that have kept their promises. And, uh, but I do want to make just a few announcements. First of all, first and foremost, I want to remind everyone of our charter conference meeting this afternoon at 3 o'clock with our next superintendent of Q and our circuit. Uh, if you are a member of the church, you are welcome, you are encouraged. I would even say you're required, but I'm not going to say that, to attend a church conference. Today at 3 o'clock, we look forward to that time of of celebrating our ministry, being together with our neighboring churches and our superintendent. Uh, then I also just want you to, in addition to our normal things, just mark your calendars. A uh, Jackson concert series on Thursday, youth and children's choir concert uh, next Sunday afternoon, and then of course mark your calendars for uh, November 20th, our Thanksgiving service and and meal service at 10 o'clock, combined service at 10 o'clock. Uh, Meal to follow. I want to say again a word of welcome to those of you, our Saints families, who are joining us today. We invited you. We're glad that you came and that uh, been a part of that. I just want to for I just want to for warn you if you're not a member of a regular attender of Wesley, uh, we're doing a little bit of business here today uh, in terms of our our stewardship and so forth. Uh, please, please. Number one, don't think that we talk about money all the time because we don't. Uh, number two, if, if uh, you don't worship with us regularly, you worship elsewhere, uh, just let that um, kind of roll off the back if you would. We would appreciate that. We would give us a chance to do um, And then finally, in terms of, a, uh, terms of important announcements, I don't want to miss. Uh, as I, I referred to earlier, I, I woke up in the Eastern Time Zone. Uh, yesterday morning, uh, I was in Fort Wayne, Indiana for our jurisdictional conference. I was a delegate for our jurisdictional conference. For jurisdiction, just so you know, we are the states of Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, Illinois, Wisconsin, Iowa, Minnesota, and North and South Dakota. Uh, the primary work of the jurisdictional conference is to elect bishops for our jurisdiction, which we did. We elected three bishops. Uh, we elected uh, Bishop Anita Bingham Sai, uh, who has been assigned to Iowa, so we are receiving a new bishop. Our Bishop Lori is retiring at the end of this year, and Bishop Anita, as she wishes to be called, uh, will begin serving here in Iowa January 1st. We welcome her, we meet uh, Lori Adu, and then uh, special to my heart, uh, our own Lynette uh, Clemback, who has been our assistant to the bishop, was elected a bishop and has been assigned to the Dakotas and Minnesota area effective January 1st. And so we, we wish her well, uh, celebrate her ministry here in Iowa. And then um, and then finally, uh, Dan Shirley uh, was elected bishop and appointed to the Northern Illinois Conference. So uh, please be praying for all of uh, those bishops in transition. Uh, our Bishop Lori, who's retiring, Bishop Lee, who's coming to us, and then Lynette, who is is leaving Iowa to go and be in the ministry elsewhere. Um, and uh, there were, there's more details coming out about that. I just got back at six o'clock last night, so there's not a lot of news I can put out about that at this, in this short notice. But, uh, but I appreciate your prayers while I was gone and, and uh, our prayers for our conference. Our scripture reading this morning 
comes from 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. Listen to the word of, to the word of God. When the Lord was about to take Elijah out to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way to Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elijah, Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, so be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as you, as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. Go to Jericho. The company of the prophets of Jericho went up to Elijah and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied. So be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha stopped in the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. Excuse me. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elijah, Tell me what I can do for you before I am taken from you. Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elijah replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garment and tore it in two. Elisha then picked up Elijah's cloak, which had fallen from him. And went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Well, today we conclude our series, a sermon series called Promises, based on our membership vows of prayers, presents, gifts, service. <laughs> And witness. And we have unpacked all of those, the prayer, the presence, the gift, the service, and witness, and talked about how all of them are important pieces of, of how we function as members of Christ's body in the local church. And you can go back and you can see any of those sermons you might wish to. And as we gather here on this All Saints Sunday, and the end of our promises series, remembering and renewing our promises, we remember that we are only here today because of those who came before us kept their promises. We only have a church today because of the prayers, the presence, the gifts, the service, and the witness of those who have come before us. Usually when we talk about saints, the first thing that pops into our mind is the, the, the famous saints, those that get their names on the calendar, those that get their names in the history book. But we all too often overlook the, the, uh, the saints that are less well known, the local saints, if you will, the saints that built this church, that they made this church, that did this ministry, that taught children, that sang in the choir, that maintained the building, that worked in the kitchen, the people who prayed, the people who showed up, the people who gave, the people who served, and the people who shared their faith with others. That's the reason we're here today. You're here today because somebody brought you you're here today maybe because you become from a long line of, of saints. 
Maybe you can trace your spiritual heritage way back through the generations of faithful people. Or maybe you're just here today because one person reached out to you and said, come go with me. But either way, we're here today because, first of all, because the Holy Spirit called us, and we're here today because there's a church today because of the faith of God and the faith of the generations that have gone before us. And so now, as Elijah did for Elisha, they have cast the mantle on to us. And, and I call it, you know, and we don't like to talk about that. It, it's like it's like Elisha said, yeah, don't, don't talk about that, but we need to talk about it. We need to talk about both the, the celebration of the ministry that has gone before, of those who have gone before us, and we need to talk about how we're going to carry that ministry on, how we're going to take up that mantle, how we're going to keep our promises so that we can leave a church to those who come after us. And so now, let us take up the mantle. Let us keep our promises to support the ministries of the church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Now we're going to do that housekeeping thing I told you about a minute ago. This church has been blessed throughout its time with generations of faithful and generous and regular givers and servants and, and attenders and prayers. But we need to raise up a new generation. We need to raise up a new generation because that older generation is passing on to the saints in glory. So we need to raise up a new generation of faithful prayers, of faithful attenders, of faithful givers, of faithful servants, and of faithful witnesses. And so that's what this sermon series has been all about. It was a really sneaky way to get to Pledge Sunday. Let me say sneaky. Um, and so in your bulletin, again, I, I, I'm talking to our Wesley folks, and so if you're guests here, welcome. Leave back for a minute. I'll let you know when to pay attention. <laughs> but for our Wesley folks, you'll find your bulletin of pledge card, or as I like to call it, a promise card. And, and I want you to ignore the front of it for a minute, the money part. Just ignore it. Just ignore it. Just take it and, and flip it over. Um, just flip it over. And it says on there, I am renewing my commitment to support the ministries of Western United Methodist Church with my prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. There's check boxes, right? Dan, I forgot to the box up. It's on the piano in the chapel. Thank you. You notice there's check boxes. Every single one of you who are members of Wesley Church and, and your families that attend your regularly, you can check those boxes, right? Especially since you've been through the whole sermon series, right? You can check those boxes. I want each and every person particularly if you're, if you're a member of a Wesley family, even, even if you're a child and you're a member of a Wesley family, check those boxes so you'll have something to turn in. In a moment, there's going to be a gold box up here, which you've all seen before, um, to place these in. As you come forward to communion, just place these in the box. Every single one of you who are at least, and again, if you're a guest, you're welcome to too, but particularly if you're part of our Wesley family, each and every one of you should be able to at least fill out this side, put that in the box. All right, that's between you and God, you don't even have to sign it. What if we put it in the offering box? Then, then it's done, we got it. Thank you. I'm gonna set this up here, just on the front pew as you go by. All right, always have to be flexible, fine. Now, 
That's easy enough. Now the other side, the money side. Some of you are pleasures. Some of you, this is this is spiritual discipline you've done for a long time. We appreciate you so much. Hear me. If you've renewed your pledge, particularly if you decided to decide you can increase your pledge this year, if you're pledging for the first time, we appreciate you. I want to take a step back from that and say maybe, maybe you're somebody that you're 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 ready to give yourself a number this year. Because some of you may not be in that place yet. Some of you may not be in that place where you're ready to commit to a number. Some of you may be a place where you're ready to commit to a number. All right? Think about your number. Right? Is it a weekly number? Is it a monthly number? That's that you you know you know your business. But but think about a number and put that on there. Your number's going to be different than your neighbor's. Your number's going to be different than mine. Let me, let me just give you just one more bump there. You may think, Pastor Brian, I, I, I'm ready to write down a number. I'm just not sure I'm ready to write down my name. Right? Anybody resonate with that? Like, I'm, I'm really ready. I'm really ready to write down a number, but I'm not really ready to sign my name to it yet. You don't have to put your name. You have your name on your own. Nobody, nobody's watching you. Nobody's keeping score. We just want this to be a place where you can you can make some promises, and and by making promises and keeping promises, you'll grow, and you'll grow, and the church will grow. This, brothers and sisters is your mantle. This is your cloak. This is your soul. This is what you are taking up today. This is what you are receiving from the generations that have gone before you, and this is what you will one day pass on to those who come after you. Because if we want a church to be here 20, 50, 100 years from now, it is up to us. We must take on <coughs> And when the time comes, let us be ready for the next passing of the man. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for the saints that have gone before us. The faithful prayers, the faithful attenders, the faithful givers, the faithful servants, the faithful witnesses that have given us the gift of Wesley United Methodist Church. We thank you especially for those we remember today who have gone to glory in this Previous year, God, we thank you for family and friends who have accepted the invitation to be with us today. Thank you that they have kept their promises and that we have benefited. And so now, oh God, help us to keep the promises that we have made so that one day we can pass the mantle to the generation that follows. God, we pray for this church. We pray that you bless us and help us to grow and prosper. Help us to worship and serve you in spirit and truth and serve the world in your name. God, we pray for the whole body of Christ around the world. We pray for the persecuted church. We pray for the United Methodist Church. We pray for this annual conference. We pray for our bishop, Glory, as she prepares to retire for Bishop Kavita as she comes to serve among us. We pray for Bishop Manette who will leave to serve in the Dakotas and in Minnesota. We pray for this district, our superintendent Doug. We pray for our charter conference this afternoon and for the churches are serving. We pray for 
all the people and places of the world who are in need today, all those that are sick, all those that are suffering. We pray for men and women who serve us at home and abroad. We pray for our world leaders at every level. We pray for ourselves, our families, our church, our community, our nation, and the whole world for blessings of peace, justice, health, safety, freedom, stability, prosperity, and holiness. And now, God, we pray that you hear the prayers of each and every heart that is worshiping with us today, either in person or online, as we lift up our prayer to you, either silently or aloud, saying, in Jesus' name, Amen. Loving God, you've heard our prayers here this morning, and you hear the prayers that remain silent about our hearts. God, you know our every need, and when we do not know how to pray, your Spirit intercedes for us with groanings that are too deep for words. God, we pray that you hear us now as we lift up our voices together in the prayer which our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. It is the custom of the church on All Saints Sunday, that is one of the Sundays, that we renew our uh, baptismal vows. And especially today, as we come to the end of our promises series, uh, you will find your responses on the screen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. On behalf of the whole church, I ask all of you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin. Yes. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Yes. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your full trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church? which Christ has opened the people of all ages, nations, and races. Yes. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Yes. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do 
Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of our body, and the life everlasting. Remember your baptism and be thankful. The Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born of the water and the Spirit, you may live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us rejoice in the faithfulness of our covenant God. We give thanks for all that God has already given us as members of the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We will faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God can be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace who has called us to his own glory in Christ, establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Friends, we will receive Holy Communion as we have recently. Uh, for those of you who are uh, guests with us, you are welcome to receive Holy Communion with us if you are a believer in Jesus Christ. Please come down the center aisle. I'll offer you a wafer. Receive that. Uh, step to either side of the server. will offer you a cup. Receive that. And then there are waste baskets for those empty cups at either side as you return by the side aisle. Uh, the, the pledge box for your pledge cards, you should all have a pledge card in that, uh, is just here, will be on your left, on this left front of you, as you, as you come up. And we also switch it to your right, so we'll make it easier for most people, except for our left hand, if you want. Let's put it over here. Dear friends, the United Methodist Church practices open communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table all those who truly love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. And young children are welcome to participate at the discretion of their parents. Therefore, let us prepare ourselves to receive this holy sacrament by confessing and repenting of our sins in silence. I also have room three available up here. Simply indicate your desire for that as you uh, come forward. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children through all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name 
and joy in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, who gave birth to your church, deliver us from slavery to sin and death, and make with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we name before you. Tony Kochner. Lynn Smith, Emma Wolfmore, Mildred Clubton, Beth Posey, Alan Wolfowitz Ward, Carol Brady. Martha Rose Jackson, Paul Silasing, David Kerr, George Hahn, Mary Wick, Ken Keller. Mary Rumbry, Burrow Fatty, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, <laughs> looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your Spirit, may us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast with his heavenly <laughs> banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Would the service come forward, please?
Friends, all is ready. All are welcome. Come to the table. Sing a new 
Join me in the prayer after communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant us spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you. 
Thank you. 